thank you all once again for being here. It's called the Brand Identity Global Conference. What is a brand? What is the difference between ha having a business and having a brand? There are so many brands of shoes. I'm wearing a, a, a Yeezy, right? The, as, at some point, I'm just wearing this because it's a nice shoe, it's trendy. But at what point do I get to when I say, for me, if I'm going to wear a shoe, it's a Yeezy or nothing? Brands like Nike, Adidas have gotten to that stage. And how do you get there? It's a combination of your logo, your look and feel, your color, your personality, the promise to the consumer, and how consistent you've been in building all these brand attributes that you have intrinsic to your product. I think ultimately it um, provides loyalty. It's, uh, loyalty is about the fact you choose that brand over another, uh, as Steve sort of touched on. Um, with respect to uh, what makes a brand more than just a business, it's that, again, it comes down to the consistency, but also a vision um, and that repeated value that is, is delivered time after time from a business. So if you're going to buy a pair of Nike shoes, you know that they're going to be comfortable for the most part, you know they're going to be relatively good value, and you know that aspiring people wear them too, and it's that whole thing about what, what brings the story together, about what that business is and what it can offer to the world. When I think about the brands... I think there's one important question because there's anybody here can own a business, but what sets your business apart from people in the same type of business? I think that's when the whole branding comes into play. All of us here can own a restaurant, and sorry I keep referring to food, I'm on a diet and I'm hungry. Um, <laughs> everyone here can own a restaurant, but why is your restaurant gonna be different from mine even though we're serving the same barbecue ribs? <laughs> <clears throat> French fries and, and everything else. Milkshake? Milkshake, all of that. So what sets it apart? Yes, of of course. course, then you now go into the logos and then the colors and then what your ribs taste like and why mine is more honey dip and, <laughs> and all of that. So I think, I, I think that's what it is. What sets you apart and how do you, you know, relay that? That's amazing because one of the things I wrote down when you were speaking was USP, which is something that in brand speak, your unique selling point. It's very important when you're sitting down in those strategic meetings at the beginning of developing a business, how, what, do you, what is it that is setting you apart that is allowing you to understand that you are a, you're, you're trying to develop a brand? You're trying to develop something that is beyond the Naira and Kobo or the dollar of today and is something that is revered and lives beyond you. So thank you so much for that. And I, and I think that we can share the microphone. Setting yourself apart has um, a tie-in with how you communicate and how you make that product desirable to um, the target audience. Look, PR is not putting an advert in the paper. Even the people that you meet people and like, oh, so you do adverts. I'm like, no. <laughs> so it's, I'm really trying to educate um, the general public. You know, we've been putting articles into, in newspapers to let them know that it's creating a story where there's no story. And it's creating something that has been endorsed by a third party, not something that you are putting out there for yourself. So it gets a, a, a better mileage. You know, so I hope I answered that. Yes, you did. You've answered the question spot on. It's, you know, I can see Bookie is nodding her head vigorously. And the funny thing is that we actually, as PR professionals, we have it easier here than we do abroad. Because when you call an editor, a journalist in the UK or in America, you literally have one minute to sell to your make story. Yourself, yeah. And they drop the phone on you. <laughs> Whereas here, your journalists take time, they listen to you, they actually sometimes print your um, press release as it's written, you know, without any changes. So we're lucky. Um, you know, yes, we have areas that we can improve, but we're lucky. So we have to take the opportunity, because it's a partnership. The media need the news, and you have the news. So it's, it, it's, it's, it's a natural marriage. And I want to ask Mark to tell us the role the marketing plays in running social media, for example. Certainly. Um, with respect to the SME side of things as well, which I think is obviously the focus today, um, social media provides a, a fantastic free platform for any new business to come online and to instantly gain some exposure. Um, even if you're a one-man band or if there's a few of you creating a new business, social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, professionally LinkedIn is very good if you're looking to sort of business-to-business -business type things. And these are instant platforms that you can sign up today, 
get correspondence going today, generate content today, and it's all and it's free. And obviously, there are elements that you can sort of, if you have a small budget, put towards it. But these are instantly uh, platforms that can obviously grow your business um, exponentially from day one um, without too much trouble either. Again, you kind of people, especially in sort of a network such as Lagos as well, people are, um, business is very social as it is already, so people are um, already sort of interacting and, and doing business with peers and social uh, uh, contacts already. So already organically that network can grow very quickly um, and, and if you can tie that in with a good kind of brand story alongside um, communication of how you can maybe, if it's about purchasing products or awareness of how products can become available, if it's all done in a very cohesive way, then it's something that people can do individually without even needing professional help. But naturally, there are companies out there that can assist too. The, the first thing to do, I think, is just to first establish what do you even, if, if, you're, if the product or service you want to create were to be a human being, what would it be like? Your personality type, how do you even start off choosing a personality type? Because that's going to drive a whole lot of the other activities you're going to be involved in. There's a big difference between the personality type of Virgin Islands and BA. Virgin is much more daring, more adventurous. So you see all the risque ads you see building the Virgin brand drives from that singular personality that has been established from day one. And if you're talking about banks, if you look at the landscape of banks in Nigeria, you see the one that tends to be more youthful. You see the one that tends to say, okay, look, even though we're old, we are also still agile as well. So you see, you find that from the, And I'm not throwing shades here, by the way. So that, that's how you go. So that, that's first the most important thing. And then your value proposition. What are you going to... What is the value? What is that singular universal truth about your brand that everybody who is a human being can relate to? You sort those ones out. Of course, there's the more technical side of, being, of iconography, be it logo, be it colossus, because see, it is in repeated sighting of some of those your iconography that recognition, rec recognizability is established. People see, oh, this is the First Bank logo, this is the Fidelity Bank logo. And as time goes on, how are you consistent with writing it? I mean, the Coca-Cola typeface is probably one of the oldest typefaces in the world. Consistently written the same way. Every touch point you see it, and it's, it's in that consistency that you build your brand. And people mistake, people always think, oh, branding is going to happen on the same day. Okay, because we are in this world of uh, fast food, microwave age. But branding takes place over time. People come to trust the product. They come to trust the service. And in that trust and in the consistency of delivery of that quality is your branding established. So, yeah. Thank you so much. I hate to close this panel. I'm enjoying it so much. I'm in my element, but I have to, because we have very busy people who've taken time out to come and spend this time with us. So please, can we have a round of applause for this amazing panel?